uh, Olga, come on up, say hello. Olga, after we did that baby dedication, she said, yeah, let's all welcome. Well, welcome her, all right? After, after we did that baby dedication, I asked her just to share a few words, and she said, I'd like to talk about Elijah a little bit, since we just prayed over Elijah back here, and that was, there was a special anointing in that dedication prayer, wouldn't you agree? And so God has a wonderful thing there. So, Olga, share with us just a moment. Just a moment. Oh, no, Are you serious? Hey. I'm a tour guide. You forgot? Yeah, in this church, that in this church, that doesn't mean a thing. Doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. Okay. okay uh, shalom. shalom. It's uh, a great privilege for me to be here with my family, and thank you very much, Ted and Gail, for inviting us. And um, I, to be honest, I was very nervous yesterday and this morning that I knew. I was invited to come here and I will face all of you and Ted said, talk about something, you know, it, yeah. you know, you, you will have to stand That's on the stage. You change your pace for him to have somebody talking about something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, friends, you have to understand, I'm not a pastor, right? I'm, I'm not a preacher. I'm a simple uh, tour guide. I'm a that simple, is a lie. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just, I, 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 go ahead. Uh, well, I've, let, let, let me, let me uh, rewind. I'm a simple Russian girl who ends up in Israel uh, a little over 13 years ago. And, and uh, since then, we've been living in Jerusalem. And uh, somehow it, it worked so that God uh, decided that um, I'm uh, good enough to, to be able to handle the, uh, his, his children, his daughters and sons who come to Israel to find out a little bit more uh, about uh, this book and about God himself. So I, I've been doing that for nine years or so now. And um, well, I got distracted. Ted, you distracted me. I'm you know, sorry. I'm a, uh, I was... <laughs> I'll sit down. <laughs> well, anyway, um, when Ted said, you, you will have to speak about something, I, I was nervous and I was like, what can I talk about? I don't know. There is so much to talk about. And at the same time, what is the right thing to say? And uh, I um, thought to myself, well, if Ted really insists that I come up to this stage and if he risks that, because I mean, um, uh, you know the difference between a radio and a tour guide? You can switch off, yeah, you can turn off the radio, but you cannot turn off the tour guide. So it was, he was taking a lot of risk, um, allowing me to stand up over here. And anyway, uh, just as we were worshiping, just as we were worshiping, uh, it came to me that, talk about Elijah, because Elijah is, is one of my favorite stories. He's one of my favorite characters, and, and uh, his story is one of my favorite. That, that speaks a lot to me personally. And I thought, okay, I will, I will talk about Elijah. And then all of a sudden we have a baby, a dedication of a baby whose name is Elijah. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Yeah, I mean. I'm not saying anything about it. And, and, and you know, one more thing bef before I actually go to First Kings, that I was sitting also uh, and, and standing and worshiping and I, I thought, uh, whatever, whatever I talk about, Elijah and whatever, I would actually like to, at the end of my you know, speech, to ask Ted to stand next to me and to pray the Lord's Prayer. Because my Christian life started with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, my grandmother taught me that when I was a child, when I, I was about uh, my younger son's age. And that's, that's when my Christian life, my Christian walk started. And that's a very special prayer. And I thought, well, no matter what I talk about, I, I want to pray together with you and together with Tad and Gail that prayer. And I will pray uh, maybe in Russian, and they pray, you all pray in English. And that's, that was done already. And how about that? I mean, this is incredible. There's a, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So now, um, okay. What I wanted to mention uh, uh, about Elijah, he's an amazing character that just shows up in the Bible. We don't know much about where he was born, how he spent his childhood, how he spent his teenage years. All of a sudden, in 1 Kings uh, 17, we read about him, that he goes and confronts Ahab. And I'm, I'm not going to give you the entire, entire story of Elijah, that the Mount Carmel, uh, which those of you who decide to go to Israel, you will be standing on that mountain. 
And um, after that contest with the false prophets, the prophets of Baal and Asherah, that the fire came from heaven, and everybody who was there could see that. And even those people who couldn't come there, they could see it because the mountain is so high. So all those people who stayed in the villages, they could look up and they could see that fire coming down. So they all prostrated themselves um, before the Lord. And then Elijah and other people took all those false prophets down to the riverbed and slaughtered them there. That was a lot of hard work. There were many false prophet, prophets. And if you come, you will see that, that place where it happened. It's right at the foot of Mount Carmel. And then um, it sounds like a victory. You know, he went back up to Mount Carmel and he started praying because prior to that, you, you remember there was a drought. That's how the story starts. And he started praying and praying and he had a, he had a helper, he had a servant and he would tell to his servant, go look into, into the west, into the sea. Do you see anything in that direction? No, nothing. Go again, take a look. There's nothing there. Go again. So on the seventh time, the servant comes back and says, oh, there is a little cloud like the size of the fist coming from the west. And Elijah knew that the rain was coming. That was the end of the drought, and that was the beginning of the blessing for the people because the drought was devastating. The drought was horrible, absolutely horrible for everybody who lived over there. And then what happens? This is, this is a culmination. I mean, he is victorious with God. God used him so mighty in a very mighty way. And then do you remember what happens to him? That's the part of the story that speaks the most to me, really. It's, it's the next chapter, and it says that Elijah was afraid. Elijah was afraid. Can you imagine that such a great prophet as Elijah, who did such mighty work, or God did such mighty work through him, he was afraid. And uh, that is so helpful to me to know that, you know what, I, I can be afraid. But, but there is God who I can pray to and he will help me. And he will help me to overcome, you know, whatever my circumstances are and whatever your circumstances are. And this is still, this is still not the end of the story. That's not the end of the part that I, I love so much. Elijah runs away. He's afraid to the point that he is actually running for his life. He's running away from Jezebel, who is the wife of Ahab, who promised that uh, Elijah will be killed because he killed all the false prophets that she brought from Phoenicia. And uh, she runs for his life. He goes to the desert. And those of you who are coming to the tour, you will see the desert. And he prays that he wants to die. Can you imagine? Elijah is praying for death. He says, I've had enough. I want to die. Please take me. And you know, the Lord doesn't condemn him for feeling that way. The Lord doesn't tell him, Elijah, come on, how can you feel this way? I mean, I, what's going on with you? You just saw my power. You just saw my strength. You just saw how thousands and hundreds of thousands of people bowed down and prostrated themselves in front of me. And like, you, are, you want to die? What are you talking about? That's not how the Lord approaches Elijah. And that's the most fantastic thing, really. He sends an angel to that desert, to that cave where Elijah is hiding. And the angel wakes up Elijah and says, here's some food, eat. Here is some water, drink, and rest. And Elijah eats and drinks and rests. And then the angel wakes him up again and says, okay, here's more food. Come on, eat a little bit. Here's some more water, drink a little bit, and rest again. And Elijah eats and drinks, and rests. And then, only then, when Elijah is a little bit rested, when Elijah is a little bit refreshed, 
the Lord kind of reveals himself to Elijah. And he tells him, go out and stand before me on the mountain. Go out and stand before me on the mountain. And you know what? When, when I look at this, it kind of brings me back to En Gedi. It kind of brings me back to this waterfall, this wonderful picture of Dawn. And brings me to a story that comes from Second, uh, wow, it ran away from me. Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 20. Um, in Gedi, that wonderful oasis, is mostly famous for the story of David and Saul, which Ted mentioned already. But it is also famous for the story of the two groups of people, Moabites and Ammonites, who were pretty bad. And they came from the eastern side of the Dead Sea, and they camped at Ein Gedi, and they were going to Jerusalem to deal with Jehoshaphat and the Jewish people over there. And it was a big, big army. It was a very strong army, a huge danger, a very strong enemy. And Jehoshaphat started praying to God. And his people started praying to God. And you know what God told him, them? Do not be afraid. Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mm. mighty army. Tomorrow, march out against them. God tells them to march out, just like he tells Elijah to come out of that cave, come out. And he tells these guys, march out and face this army, but you will not have to fight them. It's taken care of. So going back to Elijah, he comes out, he comes out of the cave, and how does God reveal himself? Does he send that you know, lightning? Does he show the might to Elijah by the lightning that he just did to the people of Israel on Mount Carmel? No, that's not how he talks to Elijah. So 1 Kings 19, 11, go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. And that's where the Lord was. So the beauty of the story to me is that God reaches every one of us in the way that we need to. And he comes down to our level. And if we need an earthquake, be sure he will send an earthquake to our lives. If we need some fire, be sure he will send some fire to us. I'm sure some of you have been through some fire and some earthquakes. There is no doubt about it. But if we need a gentle whisper, that's, that's what he will use. That's what he will use. And um, so friends, I want to encourage you, if, listen to your heart. If the Lord really puts into your heart the idea to come and visit Israel, because maybe Maybe it's not for everybody. You know what? Maybe it's not your time yet to go to the Holy Land. Or maybe it is your time to go to the Holy Land. But if it is, if you have that desire, come. You know what? Come. And when you come, you will either have it, a gentle whisper coming from the Lord. 
in one of those places. It may be in the desert. It may be on one of the mountains. Mount Carmel, maybe. Or maybe at the Sea of Galilee. Or maybe at the Dead Sea. Maybe in Capernaum, maybe in Nazareth, maybe in Jerusalem itself. Or maybe it will be more like a fire. Or more like an earthquake. Maybe you will be comforted there. Or maybe you will be encouraged. I don't know. Or maybe both. But being a tour guide for like nine years or so, I have to tell you that um, the people who come to Israel, they really don't come to see the ancient stones, which we have plenty. Okay? But that's not why they come. Because there are ancient stones in Italy, in Greece, you know, in many other places. Right? And they really don't come to see the beautiful nature. Wow, guys, look at where you live. <laughs> I mean, no comment about that. This is like paradise. Mountains and rivers and everything. But they do come because God is calling them. Because God wants to tell them something. God wants want to, to maybe, maybe explain to them the Bible better. Because people say that coming to Israel is like reading the fifth gospel. That helps you to understand the other four gospels or the entire Bible much better. So think about it. And uh, at the end of my little speech, I, want, uh, I really want to bless you. And I, I want to, um, I hope I brought the blessing from Jerusalem. I wish and pray that, that I have that blessing. I want, to bl I want to bless you all and to say, may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you peace. I think that will do. Between what Alex taught us and what you've just shared with us, what a wonderful Sunday morning. Father, we celebrate you. We're so grateful for the way you've dealt with us human beings through the centuries. Thank you for the biblical record of those wonderful miracles. And it helps explain how you deal with us. Thank you for calling us here this morning. Thank you for little Elijah and the blessing on him. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for each other. Thank you for the way you've caused us to fall in love with you and others. We're very grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go rejoicing. Love one another.